In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, His Excellency the Vice President of Iraq, Dr. Khudir Al Khuzai, Your Majesties, Highnesses, and Excellencies. His Excellency the Secretary General of the Arab League, Mr. Nabil Al Arabi, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First, it's an honor to offer my brother, His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, my congratulations for the sisterly state of Qatar, its government and people on chairing the Arab 24th summit in this kind and generous Arab country. Wishing His Highness the best of luck and success in chairing the summit which we hope that it delivers its anticipated goals, produces good and effective results for our nation. And we hope that the critical issues, as well as joint Arab action, are addressed and harmonized positions of paramount regional and international importance, principally the Palestinian question, are coordinated. I would like also to express my thanks and appreciation to my brother, His Excellency President Jalal Talbani, for his country's successful chairing of the previous Arab summit. In this respect, I would like to wish His Excellency a speedy recovery, praying that God blesses him with a lifetime of health and well-being and a safe return home. Your Majesties, Highnesses and Excellencies, this summit is exceptionally important in view of a raft of complex challenges plaguing the region and the implications and consequences of that on the Arab world and the relevant crucial issues. Dear leaders, allow me to reiterate to each one of you my sincerest thanks and gratitude for your backing of us in the United Nations when you drummed up support for Palestine to get the observer status in this international organization. And we pray to God that all the efforts that we have made together this year will yield the desired success in order for Palestine to be a full United Nations member and become an independent and sovereign state on our national Palestinian land with Jerusalem as its capital. The new status Palestine obtained will have positive impact on its legal position and will refute the claim of Israel, the occupying power, that the territory of the Palestinian state is a disputed one because with this vote Palestine has become a state under occupation which should come to an end. On our part and guided by the foregoing and the decisions you have made, we will go above and beyond to put this United Nations decision into action in line with international terms of reference by devising a new approach to resolve the existing conflict according to a clear and well-defined timetable which is conducive to the ending of the Israeli occupation of our country and to the establishment of the independent state of Palestine. This timetable covers the decision of the Arab Peace Initiative Committee by sending an Arab ministerial delegation next month to Washington, headed by the chair of the committee, which is the state of Qatar, and its members include the Secretary General for the Arab League and a number of Arab states in order to implement the set timetable. Dear leaders, I have discussed with the United States President Barack Obama a few days ago when he visited us in the state of Palestine all the final status issues 
where he stressed that his country will push for the two-state solution through negotiations. And we reiterated to him our commitment to the two-state solution within borders of 1967 and our commitment to the Arab Peace Initiative, reaffirming, reaffirming that the cessation of settlement activity and the release of prisoners are not Palestinian conditions, but they are obligations on the Israeli government established in the signed agreements and the roadmap. As far as Jerusalem is concerned, Israel works actively and systematically to Judaize East Jerusalem, alter its characteristics, detach the Palestinians from there, and to attack Al-Aqsa Mosque and the holy sites of Islam and Christianity. For that reason, there should be an Arab Islamic move to the United Nations and the international organizations to prevent the Israeli occupation from executing their destructive schemes against Jerusalem, its history, culture and landscape, as well as religious and holy sites. On this occasion, as we speak of defending Jerusalem, I would like to express my appreciation to my brother, His Majesty King Abdullah II of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, for his ongoing engagement and cooperation with us, and for doing his best to protect the Islamic holy sites in Holy Jerusalem. The other urgent issue, which is the major concern of every Palestinian household, my dear leaders, our brave men and women, prisoners in Israeli prisons, who have been subjected to grave violations, namely those on hunger strike. Our duty is to do our best to free them and save their lives from the chokehold of the dreadful Israeli prison and Israeli warden. We count on you to support our political and media efforts to rescue them and to urge international influential powers, particularly the United States and the European Union, to have Israel put an end to its occupation and free all of our prisoners from its prisons. That being said, we are greatly thankful for Iraq for holding a conference in Baghdad to support Palestinian prisoners in Israeli prisons and its call to set up a fund for prisoners. Your Majesties, Highnesses and Excellencies, the Palestinian people are being subjected to systematic collective punishment, which has heightened since September 2011 until early 2013, as a result of Palestine's uncompromising decision to seek a United Nations enhanced status. This decision was not sought as a political luxury, it was to preserve our right to the land of our Palestinian state, as I mentioned earlier, within the borders of 1967, and to refute the claim that it is a disputed territory. This punishment was effected by holding back Palestinian tax money, which further deepened the deficit in the Palestinian budget, to the point that in late 2012 and early 2013, it was no longer able to fulfill its obligations and fully pay the paychecks of its employees, who amount up to 168 Palestinian households in the West Bank, Jerusalem and Gaza. Despite all that, the Palestinian people will not give up on their resilience and will continue to defend their right to their land and holy sites. To really help the Palestinian people, you have to constantly support them until the occupation is ended and their independent and sovereign state is established. Only then will they be able to depend on themselves as a people and stand tall and be self-sufficient. The Arab support 
strengthens the resilience of the heroic Palestinian people in resisting the Israeli occupation aggression. Therefore, what we expect is commitment to your pledges to offer financial support to the budget according to the 2002 Beirut summit instruments and establish the financial security network as planned in Baghdad summit. I would like to commend the generous initiative of His Highness Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani on establishing a fund to support Jerusalem with a capital of $250 million. And I call on the sisterly Arab states who are financially able to contribute to the fund as soon as this honorable summit is concluded. In this respect, I would like also to commend the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in establishing Al-Aqsa and Al-Quds funds, which were set up with the generous initiative of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz, in 2011. These two funds have been fundamentally instrumental in offering exceptional support for your people in Palestine to strengthen their resilience in facing aggression and blockade. And I hope that both funds are constantly supported as necessary to ensure they are both effectively operational. I would like here to underline the importance of the role of His Majesty King Muhammad VI in chairing the Jerusalem Committee and reinvigorating the Bayt Mal al-Quds Agency. Your Majesties, Highnesses and Excellencies, we stand ready and strive as hard as we can to put an end to the irregular state of internal Palestinian divide. This divide has inflicted serious damages to our cause. Despite of that, we have to turn to the people who have the ultimate say in this. And this is done by conducting presidential, legislative and national council elections so that we can get out of this deadlock. And despite of this divide, we have not refrained in any way from fulfilling our responsibilities toward our citizens and our people in Gaza as we spend roughly 130 million dollars a month from our budget to pay salaries in Gaza and provide services to our people in the besieged and resilient enclave not as a favor but as an obligation and we do call for the lifting of the blockade immediately in this context, we welcome His Highness Emir of Qatar's call for the mini-summit on reconciliation led by Egypt along the lines of Cairo and Doha agreements. It's understood that the agreement concluded in Doha more than a year ago calls for the formation of an interim government of independence and at the same time to conduct elections. As far as we are concerned, we are committed to this agreement as well as the subsequent one, the Cairo Agreement. Therefore, we welcome His Highness's suggestion. We expect that you all do all you can to spare our Palestinian refugees who are residing in Syria the agony of displacement and keep them away from internal conflicts because they are guests with every sisterly and friendly people on whose land they are temporarily residing and our unchanging policy is that we shall not interfere in the internal affairs of the hosting countries and others and we wish all the peoples of our Arab and Islamic nation security and stability so that they can enjoy well-being, growth and prosperity, stressing at the same time that we are not a party to any conflict that happens anywhere. We are already suffering too much from our conflict with the Israelis.
In conclusion, I hope that this conference yields the anticipated results and produces effective solutions to all the problems listed on our summit's agenda. I would like also to thank the Excellencies, Ministers of Foreign Affairs for approving all the proposed decisions on Palestine, hoping that you all facilitate their implementation. I would like again to truly thank the sisterly state of Qatar for their warm welcome and hospitality we were met by in this proud country and the Arab League staff, particularly the Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al Arabi. May God's peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you.